Good evening. This is TTT Live and TTT Live Online on Facebook. I am Ian Wallace with a COVID-19 review. This year's theme for World Environment Day is Time for Nature, focusing on protecting the variety of plant and animal life in the world. Recent events from bushfires in Brazil and the United States and Australia, the locust infestations across East Africa, and now a global disease pandemic show the interdependence of humans and the webs of life in which they exist, states the United Nations. Scientists, policymakers, citizens have urgent need to protect not only rare and threatened species, but the wildlife on a whole, so-called biodiversity. In today's show, we will be joining the Institute of Marine Affairs and the University of the West Indies to share what biodiversity means during a pandemic. Now from the UWI, we are speaking with Professor Judith Govin and Dr. Amy Deacon. Judith Govin, you were present for deep sea discoveries in Grenada using the remote submersible and also made stunning discoveries in local waters. So, Professor Judith, how is diversity faring in Trinidad and Tobago? Oh, thank you for that, Aaron. Um, so, as, as we all know, biodiversity is really at three different levels. The level of genetics or genes, species, as well as ecosystems. So any impact on any of these levels is going to negatively impact on biodiversity. Uh, at the moment, we have different impacts on, for example, those ecosystems, uh, sandy shore, beaches, mangroves, coral reefs. I think we're all um, fairly aware of the negative impacts from pollution, from coastal erosion, from just um, a lot of runoff land from the land the pollutants from the land, from land and activities that are carried on on land. They all get to the marine environment. So and in particular, um, that's my area of specialization, marine environments. Um, in, in terms of Trinidad and Tobago, we do have um, a lot of negative impacts that affect these ecosystems and the different levels of biodiversity. And we really need to really improve on these. We need to give each the time, we need to step back up so that we can allow these ecosystems to recover. Um, how we do that, um, and I know we'll be speaking a little bit more about that. Okay, so uh, what uh, then uh, concerns you most uh, in terms of uh, the biodiversity within Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. Gogan? So what concerns me most is that there is the lack of an integrative or integrated process or plan of action. We are very, very, um, I'm very pleased to say that in Trinidad and Tobago, we have a lot of organizations, we have a lot of very, very good people, good scientists, some of which are with us today, the two from the IME, as well as uh, myself and Dr. Deacon and colleague. There's a lot of work being done at the University of the West Indies, at the IMA, as well as the UTT. But there is no cohesive plan of action that's working. We really need to work together. We need to uh, really have a proper work plan as to which areas are being covered and where the research is being done, that research should be the guiding policy. Um, again, there's a disconnect between the research and the policy and that is really very unfortunate. So we do have, as well in Trinidad and Tobago, a lot of very good policies. We belong to a lot of, um, we are party to a lot of international treaties which directly affect biodiversity. But what is not happening is really us making that link. And we are hoping that in this um, coming next few years and using the theme of World Environment Day and World Ocean Day, which is on Monday as well, that we will work was really closing those gaps because we really need to do that. We need to make that connection. And of course, that will mean that we need to have conversation at higher levels with the, with the government and with the policy makers and the decision makers. We really need to emphasize the importance of preserving and maintaining, not so much preserving, good use of our biodiversity, conservation and protection really of our biodiversity future generations. Okay, so it seems as though you're looking for not only obviously more plans, but definitely more action. Well, let's uh, switch then to uh, Dr. Amy Deacon to find out um, how do you think the pandemic has impacted uh, diversity? Yes, 
Hello. No problem. Sorry, I had well, to uh, Doctor uh, Amy Deacon, to... um, I think we can uh, now hear you. So, uh, how no, has uh, this pandemic impacted the diversity? So, I feel it's a little early to say um, exactly how it. It's too early to say whether it has impacted that biodiversity um, specifically. Um, we see signs around the world that um, you know certain species and ecosystems have had a little bit of a break um, because of the of less human impact. But at the same time, it's a more complicated story because um, in some ways, less people being around may have actually allowed more illegal activity to happen. And we might actually see some species and ecosystems have actually had a harder time during um, this last period of the pandemic. Um, for example, in Trinidad and Tobago, of course, we have um, a poaching problem in our forests uh, with our game mammals. And yes, um, you'd imagine there are probably fewer hunters now because they're not permitted to go into the into the forest to hunt. But at the same time, those illegal poachers may still be going out there. And in fact, they might be going out there more. We, we don't know this, but it's those kind of um, things that are very hard to detect and maybe, um, yeah, less direct effects of the of the lockdown that we just don't know about. Thankfully, um, our colleague, Dr. Luke, Ro Luke Rostam and the EMA have done lots of baseline surveys of those game mammals in Trinidad and Tobago which means that as soon as they're able, they can actually go and collect data on the state of the game mammals. And those, those mammals in our, in our forests um, will maybe, we might see an indication of whether there has been an effect or not, but we really need to get those data first. Um, it's really great that we're, we're in a position to, to see that. It'll be very interesting to find out whether they have been positively or negatively impacted um, by this period. So it, it may be a bit too early to tell how the uh, pandemic is impacted by biodiversity, Dr. Amy Deacon, but what would you like to see as the pandemic restrictions ease? Yeah, I have very high hopes and maybe I'm being optimistic, but um, I would love to see people coming out of this pandemic with a much greater understanding of how connected we are with the environment and our ecosystems and what a delicate balance it is uh, between humans and nature. We can't think of human activities in isolation from what is happening in the rest of the ecosystem because everything we do um, either positively or negatively is going to affect everything else and i think this pandemic has highlighted that both in terms of where the diseases came from in the first place with human interactions with nature but also in terms of when we see um, how nature and climate is, is responding to, to our behavior in lockdown and i think that should bring it home to us about um, not being able to separate those things i hope that people don't just return to the status quo once we have all those restrictions lifted. I hope people um, gain that sort of appreciation for the biodiversity in that backyard, as well as thinking twice about certain impacts we have with the flights and car journeys, all these things that maybe now we've, we've for been forced to um, give up, but maybe we don't need all of those even, even once we go back to normal. Okay, well, um, I'll pose the same question then to uh, Dr. Judith Gobin. Um, what would you like to see as uh, Professor Gobin as the pandemic uh, restrictions ease? Oh, um, yeah, I mean, I think I'm just, we're just as excited um, from the marine environment to really where um, a lot of the maritime traffic, a lot of that, the cruise ships, you know, a lot of that, those impacts will reduce um, to some extent some of the oil and gas um, activities and exploration activities will reduce. Um, so those would obviously, that having been reduced as, as there's been reports globally, um, that there's been clarity, better clarity of waters, coastal waters, and of course these waters um, eventually get to the deep sea. Quite rightly, as Dr. Deacon has pointed out, um, every tiny thing that we do, um, even in our own homes, when we release um, liquids, when we release waste into, the, um, into our drains and drain pipes, it gets to the sea eventually. So, and those small impacts in, in, in some other form, but in those impacts really can go um, to other Caribbean territories and other, um, other water masses and bodies. So what would really be good is if we um, continued in, in this way in that to really um, do we need all these um, cruise ships in our waters? Do we need to better manage how we release our liquid, um, solid, and gaseous waste, how are we going to do that? And I think this is it's a good opportunity for us to think about how we can better improve on it. And I think the lack of activity 
um, in the, that in our mangroves, swamps on the beaches, for example, um, in the coral reefs, um, reduced diving, and it really just means reduced numbers of humans impacting on the ecosystem. And okay. what we really should take a step back is let's think about what the carrying capacity of these systems I'm, are. I'm it's a good time for us to consider how can we manage exactly. who uses when they use a particular ecosystem right. Right. or a particular environment. And, and that and seems that uh, all quite, I think that's, that seems like a, a very good uh, way to um, take a, uh, basically just a short break. And I'd like to thank you, uh, Professor Gobin and uh, Dr. Deacon. Uh, we'll just take a short break now and then we'll come back and we'll talk with the IMA as we talk World Environment Day during COVID-19. Stay with us on Response to COVID-19. Welcome back to Response to COVID-19. We're talking World Environment Day during a global pandemic. And from the Institute of Marine Affairs, Rohana Juman and Anjani Ganes, our coral reef ecologist and author of the article, Living with Nature, join us now. So uh, thank you. And uh, first, we'll speak with Dr. Rohana Juman on how the pandemic has affected the diverse types of flora and fauna in our waters. So, Dr. Juman, how has the pandemic impacted our local seas and the coastlines? So the only thing I can tell you conclusively at this point is that we would have conducted some water quality sampling, looking specifically at bathing beach water quality um, at popular recreational beaches such as Maracas, Las Cuevas, and, and Chagaramas. And during this period where no one is going to the beach and there's very little activity, the levels that were recorded of the um, fecal coliform, which are the indicator species that we look at to look at if the water is polluted with sewage, um, the levels were lower than ever recorded before in the dry season. So I can tell you that for a fact. Um, with regards to the other aspects of biodiversity, um, during this period, we were not able to actively monitor a lot of the coastline. However, I did conduct some field surveys and we had issues in terms of the sagassum that came up not only in Tobago in April, but also in along the east coast of Trinidad in March of this year. So when we went out during in April, we found that a lot of the um, sagassum had um, was piled up on the beach and would have been rotted. And of course, um, it was on the beach, it was rotted. There was nobody really using the beach and there was a lot of flies that were, were associated with it. We also visited the carcass and um, just last week, um, Ikakas had a very vibrant freshwater marsh environment, and due to the harsh dry season, it has dried up. There were a lot of dead fishes. Um, actually, the villagers were actually trying to take out some of the, the, the fishes that were now dying so they can use for food. So that area, because not only of the COVID, but because of the very harsh dry season, we're seeing some changes along our coastal wetlands because um, there's no fresh water coming into the system. Okay, now obviously uh, this uh, ties in with uh, this uh, dry season being one of the driest ones. In fact, uh, April was uh, the second driest on record according to the Meteorological Service. Yeah. So we can probably see how that explains some of what you've been uh, talking about. Now, uh, Dr. Anjania Ganes, um, what concerns you most about the uh, live coral reef in Trinidad and Tobago as it relates uh, to this uh, pandemic? Um, related to COVID, I think it, these reefs are sort of getting a chance, actually. So we haven't actually gone out to see what the reefs are doing, but we will have a, a chance to go out pretty soon. Um, and I think in the short term, when you have um, recreational fishing activities, boating activities, and just um, development being um, stopped, you, uh, I think these reefs have a chance to sort of catch themselves in the short term and um, it would be nice to see if there are any observable changes in the near future. Um, I think moving forward in terms of COVID, um, um, what we, the lessons that we learned from COVID are basically how uh, human activities have affected the environment and how it's, it's, it's affected our lives and livelihoods in return. Um, but what a lot of people don't think about are how human activities have already 
affected a lot of our marine environment and other um, of our natural resources. So for example, coral reefs have, um, especially in the Caribbean, have been suffering from coral diseases for uh, over the last 20 years. And that's related to human activities um, associating and helping with the spread of that disease regionally. So coming out of COVID, I think it's like a lesson to be learned about how we treat our environment. And I think with respect to our marine environment and us being an island nation, I hope that um, a lot more people will be willing to sort of think about uh, the, our marine environment a little bit more. Okay, so uh, Dr. Ganesh, so it seems as though uh, biodiversity uh, in the waters around Trinidad and Tobago is uh, pretty much a, a mixed bag. Would you be leaning more to a glass half full or half empty? Um, at this stage, I think we would, I would think a little more to half empty. I mean, we have our coral reefs, but currently in Trinidad, we have lost most of our seagrass beds that have a lot of biodiversity and a nursery for fish and a lot of our wetlands as well that have a lot of biodiversity is also being negatively impacted. So as much as I would like to believe it's harmful, it's, you know, we, but the thing about it, it's not, it's not hopeless. We can take action now to reverse some of these effects. Um, you know, last year, just last year, there was a, a report that came out, an international global report that indicated that biodiversity was actually declining at an unprecedented rate. It was the highest ever and that more than a million species were actually on the brink of extinction. But coming out of that report, you know, they said, it's not all, all bad, things can turn around, but we require what they consider transformative change, where we not only consider the biology, but we consider the economics, the behavioral um, aspects, the social aspects, and try to integrate all, as all of these things into what's um, managing or trying to conserve biodiversity. Okay. So Obviously, the COVID-19 pandemic is not going away anytime soon, but we have begun mm -hmm. to see uh, restrictions easing. What would you like to see? Well, Dr. June. I can just say that it's the pandemic and the very dry, um, dry season we're experiencing. So there's been, in terms of some of these- Sorry. Um, yes, uh, right. Dr. Uh, Ganes? Um, you've been uh, talking about uh, how the uh, pandemic, it's too early to tell what's been happening with the biodiversity, but what would you like to see as the pandemic restrictions ease, Dr. Gannis? Um, I think um, we would like to see a better management of our marine environments, uh, a more inclusive discussion when it comes to certain projects that will affect um, our neighboring marine environments um, after COVID. Um, I think there, as Dr. Juman was saying, you know, biodiversity is declining, but there is still hope. Um, and I think that we just need to sort of more actively manage and uh, protect our marine environments because we are more aware of the impacts it has on our lives and our livelihoods moving forward. Um, coupling that with climate change, you know, climate change is still a major and a long-term threat. So while in the short term, you know, a lot of our marine habitats or other habitats around the world were getting some form of relief because of, of lower human activities. It's not going to be enough to, um, to fight against climate change. And I think we need to stay focused on, on that moving forward. Okay. Well, I'd like to uh, thank you both, uh, Dr. Juman and uh, Dr. Ganes, for an enlightening uh, conversation. And uh, basically, we'd like to join you again as we go through uh, this pandemic to get an update uh, possibly in the coming months. So thank you once again. Now, the ongoing uh, COVID-19 pandemic, the latest in the string of disease outbreaks from animals to human, shows that the planet's health is linked to our health. So bringing back ecosystems will improve the variety of plant and animal life, boost food security and also the water supply, and possibly help us to fight the climate crisis as well. So as countries are planned the way ahead, we're getting nature to get at the center of all decision making for people and the planet, and this must be our top priority. Okay, so uh, for, thank you for joining us for response to COVID-19 in this edition. On behalf of uh, the TDT crew and myself, thank you and bye for now. <laughs>